Good day, I'm Twyla Whelan, and this is your JS News for Monday, February 5, 2024. The Jamaican government has succeeded in its bid to have CARICOM extend the suspension of a common external tariff, CET, on the importation of lithium-ion batteries from outside the region. It is effective from February 2, 2024 to February 1, 2025 for a quantity of 240,000 lithium-ion batteries. The last suspension period ended December 31, 2023, meaning Jamaican companies importing lithium-ion batteries sourced outside the region would need to pay the tariff making it substantially more expensive. However, the Jamaican government has been agitating for the CET suspension to be extended by another two years, as the quantities needed by Jamaica could not be sourced from within CARICOM member countries. The CARICOM Council for Trade and Economic Development, COTED, had initially denied Jamaica's bid based on a submission that a Barbados-based company was able to supply the quantity needed. But after subsequent bilateral consultations between Jamaica and Barbados, the CARICOM Secretariat has authorized the suspension of the CET. The Ministries of Industry, Energy, Finance and Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade led Jamaica's lobby efforts. Industry Minister Senator Aubin Hill says it is a win for the country's renewable energy sector and will contribute significantly to Jamaica's overall commitment to a greener and more sustainable future. He says Jamaica will continue to monitor the industry and utilize the mechanisms available under the revised Treaty of Chagaramas to verify and determine regional capacity to supply the product in the coming months. To benefit from the 50% fare reduction on JUTC buses, which takes effect April 1, commuters will need to get the company's smarter card. In addition to the reduction, passengers will also receive the benefit of three free rides. This applies to both current and new cardholders. JUTC regular fares were already reduced from $100 to $70 on January 1, while the fare for children moved from $30 to $25 and pensioners saw a cut from $40 to $30. The regular fare will be further lowered to $50 come April 1 for a total 50% reduction. However, while speaking in Parliament recently, Transport Minister Daryl Vaz clarified that it would only be accessible to those with the JUTC Smarter Cards. He says the move is in support of efforts to create a comprehensive cashless system at the state-owned bus company. Minister Vaz contends that use of the Smarter Cards will aid both efficiency and security on the buses. The current fare collection system uses a limited cashless component. However, this system is to be replaced by a comprehensive cashless system which will provide the requisite efficiency and revenue protection to cover the entire service and guard against difficulties posed by cash transactions and delays and pilferage. Jamaica's early warning system on drugs is now a reality. It was launched by the Ministry of Health and Wellness along with local stakeholders and international partners on February 2 at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel in Kingston. The early warning system consists of a multidisciplinary interagency network of 15 organizations to support public health and security efforts at addressing the threat of substance use, particularly with respect to new psychoactive substances. Through this early warning system, the Jamaican government and the people will be better able to monitor and deliver alerts on changes in drug situations and develop rapid and effective responses. The early warning system will also have the capacity to inform on consumption patterns, adverse effects, and undisclosed events, events linked to drug consumption. The launch comes as Caribbean nations and countries across the world are faced with the challenge of a rapidly changing drug market and new psychoactive substances such as molly or ecstasy and psilocybin mushrooms. More than a hundred countries and territories from all regions across the globe reported the presence of one or more such substances in their population. State Minister of National Security Juliet Cuthbert Flynn says over a thousand of these psychotropic substances have been reported up to December 2023. Jamaica is therefore very mindful that these new um, substances are already in our region and we must be alert we must be ready to tackle this problem head on with proactive approaches. 
The Agriculture Ministry will be embarking on a strategy to preserve and improve the genetic potential of Jamaica's Hope Nucleus cattle breed. This is the island's most dominant dairy breed. Portfolio Minister Floyd Green says the project, which will be based at the Bodles Research Station, will seek to maintain the local cattle herd while minimizing genetic degradation. This project's overarching goal is to restore the herd's functionality and to restore its functional capacity by implementing a genetic evaluation system. It includes increasing the frequency of desirable genes in cattle and improving milk yield, fertility, and environmental adaptability. The Jamaica Hope is among four cattle breeds suited to the local climate created by Dr. Thomas P. Leckie in 1951. The others are the Jamaica Red, Black, and Brahman. Minister Green says it is important to carry on this tradition and expand past initiatives to effectively maintain the cattle population. He was addressing a recent press briefing at the ministry's headquarters on the Hope Complex. And finally, fishermen will now witness a shorter turnaround time in getting their licenses renewed thanks to a new fisheries licensing and registration system. During his ministry's recent quarterly press briefing, Minister Floyd Green announced that the system would feature a completely digitized licensing and registration procedure. No, it takes a fisher approximately two weeks to, from applying for the license to get their license renewed. Under this new process, we expect to be able to return licenses within a week, right? Because again, it's a new digitized process and it will give our officials the ability to apply from anywhere they are in Jamaica. They won't have to go into a physical space to have the application done. The initiative will be executed through the National Fisheries Authority along with the Transformation Implementation Unit, TIU. The minister is advising fishermen to renew their permits early and not wait until they expire. And that's it for JS News Today. I'm Twyla Whelan. Thanks for watching.